Voyager 1, humanity's farthest reaching explorer, has just detected an anomaly at the edge of our solar system, something that defies logic, something that shouldn't exist. Is it a glitch, an unknown cosmic phenomenon? Or could it be proof that we are not alone? Tune in, because what was just found is the confirmation of an alien invasion. In no time since its launch in the late 1970s, Voyager 1 had one big goal, to explore the outer planets, then head off into the darkness beyond our solar system. It zoomed past Jupiter, capturing never-before-seen storms on its surface, then swung by Saturn, sending back breathtaking images of its rings. After that, it just kept going. By the year 2012, it had crossed the heliopause, the invisible border, where our sun's influence fades and interstellar space begins. This was already a historic moment. But now, more than 40 years after launch, it has made a discovery so bizarre that even seasoned experts don't know what to make of it. Before we delve into this, it's clear that what Voyager 1 just uncovered is far more shocking than anyone expected. And this won't be the only discovery that will leave you speechless. The heliopause is like an invisible shield. It keeps out most of the dangerous cosmic rays and high energy particles that zip through deep space. But something is happening at this boundary that was never predicted. Voyager 1 is picking up strange vibrations in the magnetic field, something that should not be there. These waves ripple through space in a way that no one expected. The numbers don't add up. Scientists always assumed this region of space would be calm, almost still, with only minor shifts in the magnetic field. But Voyager 1's instruments tell a different story one that suggests something or someone might be pushing back against the very edge of our solar system. What exactly is causing these ripples? That is the million dollar question. Some researchers think it could be a brand new kind of energy we have never seen before. An interaction between solar wind and some unknown force, interstellar space. Others believe it could be signals from deep in the Milky Way, echoes of something enormous and powerful, moving in the distance. But the really wild theories suggest something even more unsettling. What if something is reaching out to us? Could these signals be proof that our solar system is being influenced by forces outside of our understanding? Voyager 1's data points to something unexpected, something pressing against the boundary of our solar system, as if the heliopause itself is being squeezed. Could this be the effect of strong stellar winds from nearby stars? Or is there an even larger unseen force pressing against our solar system? Some suggest that these ripples are the result of massive energy currents flowing through the galaxy, possibly even from a source beyond the Milky Way. If true, this would rewrite everything we think we know about the way energy moves through space. But here's the real kicker. These fluctuations are not random. There is a pattern to them, something consistent and repeating. Whatever is happening out there is not just chaos. It is following rules that we don't yet understand. Could it be that the heliopause is acting like an antenna picking up signals from far beyond our corner of the universe? If so, what is sending them? Are we just now starting to eavesdrop on an interstellar conversation that has been going on for billions of years? Some scientists argue that what Voyager 1 is detecting could be a massive unknown energy grid stretching across the galaxy. If that is the case, then this spacecraft may have stumbled upon something truly groundbreaking, an unseen force that links solar systems together, possibly even controlling how stars and planets move in deep space. This would mean that our solar system is not just floating alone in the void, but connected to something far bigger than we ever imagined. Voyager 1 was not just sending data, it was showing that space is more active than anyone thought. Imagine space is not just a vast empty void, but a complex web of unseen forces stretching across the galaxy, forming invisible bridges between stars. These energy currents could be carrying signals linking entire solar systems in ways we can't even begin to grasp. If this is true, then everything we thought we knew about space is just scratching the surface. The idea that the universe operates on a hidden structure of interconnected energy flows sounds like science fiction, but maybe just maybe it's the foundation of everything. And if that's the case, then what the satellite has been doing for decades might be more important than we ever realized. Launched in the late 1970s, the satellite was never expected to last this long. It was built with technology that today looks like it belongs in a museum, yet it's still out there, still pushing forward, still sending signals home. It has traveled farther than anything humans have ever created, 
crossing the boundary where our solar system meets the rest of the galaxy. And it's sending back data that keeps scientists scratching their heads. How can a spacecraft so outdated be revealing things that we didn't even know to look for? The satellite is over 14 billion miles away from us, and yet it continues to whisper back, sharing glimpses of the unknown. Every piece of data it sends is like a signal from the edge of existence, hinting at something bigger, something we haven't yet figured out. We thought we understood space. We thought we had mapped out the limits of our solar system. But the satellite's discoveries keep proving us wrong. There are strange signals, unexplained forces, and interactions at the edges of our solar system that defy what we thought was possible. And then there's the big question, what's really out there beyond our solar system? If these energy currents are real, could they be a sign of something more, something intelligent, something watching? We have spent centuries wondering if we're alone, and every step the satellite takes makes the question loud. It has already shattered the boundaries we thought were set in stone. What if it has been sending back clues all along, and we just haven't figured out how to read them? Elon Musk has weighed in on this, calling the satellite's findings a wake-up call for humanity. If we want to go beyond our solar system, if we want to truly explore the universe, we need to build something better, faster, smart. SpaceX has pushed the boundaries of space travel, but even the most advanced rockets today are nothing compared to what we will need to send humans beyond the heliosphere. If we don't act now, we might miss our chance. Because the satellite is showing us that space isn't empty, it's alive with forces we never predicted. The idea that energy fields might connect distant points in space opens up possibilities that are both exciting and unsettling. If energy can travel along these pathways, what else? Are we the only ones listening? Or is something out there sending signals along these currents? Every piece of information the satellite sends us should make us rethink our understanding of the cosmos. It's not just about planets and stars anymore. It's about the hidden framework that ties it all together. And what if life exists beyond our solar system? Not just in the way science fiction describes, but in forms we haven't even considered if forces at the edge of our solar system are interacting with interstellar space, could they be connected to something more? What if we are already detecting signs of life, but don't recognize them because they don't fit into our narrow expectations? We've always assumed that life needs to look a certain way, but the universe doesn't follow our rules. It does what it wants, and we're just starting to catch on. The satellite has become more than just a spacecraft, it's a reminder of how little we know. It has gone where nothing else has, sending back signals from places that no human will visit in our lifetime, and yet it might not be alone. Every strange signal, every unexplained burst of data could be something waiting to be understood. It could be a cosmic whisper from something far older, far more advanced than we are. The question isn't whether the universe is full of unknowns. The question is, are we ready to face them? If there are invisible bridges in space, what could they be used for? Are they natural or were they created? Could these energy pathways explain some of the unexplained sightings and signals that scientists keep stumbling upon? If the satellite is picking up hints of something bigger, then we need to pay attention because the more we discover, the more it seems like we're just starting to understand the real story of the universe. And let's not forget, the satellite is still moving, it is still heading deeper into interstellar space, still sending back whatever it can, despite the fact that its technology is ancient by today's standards. It's out there alone in the cold emptiness, still working, and that should make us wonder why, how? How is this tiny, outdated machine still managing to function against all odds? Maybe there's something out there helping it along, or maybe we just don't understand the forces it's traveling through. One thing is certain, this mission isn't over. Every time we think we've reached the limit of what the satellite can teach us, it surprises us again. It has already rewritten what we thought we knew about the solar system, and now it's forcing us to ask even bigger questions. What is the universe hiding? What's waiting beyond the edge of our understanding? The satellite might not last forever, but its discoveries will echo for generations. We live on a tiny planet in the middle of an infinite unexplored galaxy, and the satellite against all odds is still showing us that we have barely scratched the surface. If we don't push forward, if we don't explore, we will be stuck on this one small world forever, wondering what could have been. The signals are coming in, 
The hints are there, the only question left is are we brave enough to follow them? This satellite made history, but many other satellites have also changed the way we see space and the world around us. Since humans first decided to send things into space, we've been launching satellites non-stop, each one bringing something new to the table. Sure, everyone knows about Voyager 1, but let's talk about the others, the ones that shape the way we see the universe and use technology every single day. Some of them changed history, some flopped, and others are still up there circling Earth, doing their thing. Back in the late 1950s, the Soviet Union kicked off the space race with Sputnik 1. It was just a metal ball with a radio signal, but it proved one thing, putting stuff in orbit was possible. That tiny satellite triggered a worldwide panic and forced other countries to take space seriously. Then came Sputnik 2, which carried Laika, a stray dog from Moscow. She didn't make it back, but her trip showed what space travel could do to living creatures. It was a sad story, but an important one. Not wanting to be left behind, the United States fired back with Explorer 1 in 1958. This little machine did something huge, it found the Van Allen radiation belts, giant zones of high-energy particles trapped around Earth. That discovery changed the way scientists thought about space and how they designed future missions to keep astronauts safe from radiation. Then in 1960, NASA took a different road with Tiros 1, the first ever weather satellite. Instead of focusing on deep space, this one looked back at Earth, sending pictures of clouds and storms from space. It was the start of something big, turning weather forecasting from an educated guess into actual science. That same year, Echo 1, a giant metallic balloon, was sent. It didn't do much besides bouncing radio signals back to Earth, but that simple trick paved the way for modern communication satellites. Fast forward to 1990, and the Hubble Space Telescope took space exploration to a whole new level. Instead of dealing with Earth's messy atmosphere, Hubble had a perfect view of the universe, capturing breathtaking images of galaxies, nebulas and exploding stars. It also had its fair share of problems, blurry vision at first, then constant repairs, but once NASA fixed it, Hubble became one of the most valuable tools in astronomy. While Hubble focused on deep space, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, launched in 2005, turned its eyes toward the red planet. It snapped high-resolution images of Mars, helping scientists map out possible landing sites and hunt for signs of water. With every new picture, Mars looked more and more like a place humans might actually visit someday. Then there's the Chandra X-ray Observatory, which launched. Unlike other telescopes, Chandra didn't look at visible light. Instead, it observed powerful X-rays coming from dead stars, distant galaxies and black holes. It showed us the universe in ways we had never seen before, proving that even the darkest corners of space are full of violent and energetic activity. Back on Earth, the Global Positioning System, better known as GPS, quietly changed the way people navigate the world. This isn't just some space nerd thing, GPS satellites are used by everyone from pilots to drivers to people just trying to find a good restaurant. Originally built by the United States military, GPS has since become a global tool, keeping people connected and on track no matter where they are. Of course we can't talk about space without mentioning the International Space Station. Built in the late 1990s, this massive floating lab has been home to astronauts from all over the world, running experiments in microgravity that could never happen on Earth. It's a symbol of international cooperation, proving that even when countries don't see eye to eye, they can still work together to push science forward. And then there's Starlink, a project by SpaceX that aims to surround the planet with a web of small satellites, providing high-speed internet anywhere on Earth. It's a game-changer, but not everyone is happy about it. Astronomers complain that Starlink satellites ruin the night sky, and some fear that too many satellites could lead to dangerous space debris. Whether it's a brilliant innovation, or a future disaster remains to be seen. Voyager 2 had an even bigger mission, traveling farther and reaching planets no spacecraft had seen this closely before. Launched in the late summer of 1977, Voyager 2 was built to push the limits, go farther and see more than its twin, unlike its sibling, which sped past Jupiter and Saturn before taking off into deep space, Voyager 2 took the scenic route. This spacecraft was set on a course that would let it visit not just Jupiter and Saturn, but also Uranus and Neptune, 
planets Voyager 1 never got close. The whole mission was made possible by a rare planetary lineup that let the spacecraft slingshot from one world to the next, using their gravity like a cosmic highway. With some smart tweaks and upgrades, Voyager 2 was ready to make history. What set Voyager 2 apart wasn't just where it was going, but also how it was built to handle the trip. Its cameras had to be adjusted to deal with the dim light around the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. Scientists figured out new ways to keep those cameras steady during long exposures, making sure the images came out clear instead of blurry streaks. To send data back to Earth from billions of miles away, engineers came up with smarter data compression methods, making every bit of information count. The power supply was another big challenge, since solar panels wouldn't work that far from the sun. Voyager 2 relied on nuclear power, but even that had limits. To stretch the mission as long as possible, NASA planned out a strict schedule for running the instruments, shutting some down to save energy and keep the spacecraft alive for decades. The mission's first major stop was Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system, where Voyager 2 snapped stunning images of swirling storms, massive lightning strikes, and the raging Great Red Spot. It also got a close-up look at Jupiter's moons revealing active volcanoes on Io, ice-covered oceans on Europa, and other bizarre landscapes that no one expected. Then came Saturn, where the spacecraft got a detailed look at the planet's complex ring system, and its largest moon type. But unlike Voyager 1 which focused on Titan, Voyager 2 pressed onward, heading for the lesser-known planets at the edge of the solar system. In early 1986, Voyager 2 became the first and only spacecraft to fly past Uranus. What it found was a planet that looked eerily smooth and featureless, a pale blue-green world, with hardly any visible cloud formations. But there was more going on than met the eye. The spacecraft detected a strangely tilted magnetic field, meaning the planet's interior was likely structured in a way scientists hadn't imagined. It also discovered 10 new moons and two faint rings that had never been seen before. This flyby alone made Voyager 2's mission a groundbreaking success, but there was still one more stop to make. Three years later in the summer of 1989, Voyager 2 arrived at Neptune, a planet that turned out to be far more dynamic than Uranus. Here the spacecraft found the Great Dark Spot, a massive storm as big as Earth swirling through Neptune's deep blue atmosphere. The winds on Neptune were the fastest ever recorded in the solar system, blowing at speeds that could shred anything in their path. Voyager 2 also spotted more moons and confirmed that Neptune had thin clumpy rings circling it. Perhaps the most surprising discovery was that Neptune was generating more heat than it received from the Sun, a sign that something deep inside the planet was stirring up energy. After completing its grand tour, Voyager 2 kept going. Decades passed and the spacecraft drifted farther and farther from the Sun, still sending back signals to Earth. In late 2018 it crossed the heliopause, the invisible boundary where the Sun's influence ends, and entered interstellar space. It had officially left the solar system. Even from billions of miles away, Voyager 2 continued to teach us about the space beyond our neighborhood. The spacecraft detected strange bursts of cosmic radiation, pressure waves moving through space, and hints of what lies between the stars. Keeping Voyager 2 alive wasn't easy, as the years passed, power levels dropped and the mission team had to make tough choices about what to shut down. In 2023, NASA uploaded a new software patch to prevent the spacecraft from suffering the same glitches that had plagued Voyager. Engineers also figured out how to stretch the use of the thrusters, tiny rockets that keep Voyager 2's antenna pointed at Earth. If the antenna drifts off even slightly, the spacecraft could lose contact forever. Is Voyager 1's discovery just a bizarre space glitch? Or have we finally found proof of something we were never meant to see? Tell us what you think and remember to like and subscribe for more such updates.